We've spent the last few videos talking about some web development things. So in the video before last, I you know showed you how to build a website using Flask. And in the last video, I showed you how to put Python in the front end using PyScript. However, at some point during your web development journey, you're gonna have to start thinking about user experience, i.e. how you can help the users to navigate your website, you know, what are good ideas uh, for different things, etc., etc. And one of the things you can do to help with the former is to implement a chatbot. So a chatbot is something um, where the user can either get in touch with an automated system or you know, a person on the other end. And this can help the user you know, by asking questions or just having some general help available. And it can also help you, especially in the field of e-commerce, where you can get your leads on things, you can try and promote sales uh, and secure sales and stuff like that. But it can also be useful for general user experience as well for the, all the help stuff. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to implement a chatbot in one line of code on your website. And we're gonna be doing that with the help of Tidio. Now, I'd like to thank Tidio for sponsoring this video. They've got a pretty good deal going on at the moment. So if you use the link in the description or the link on screen now, tidio.com slash get slash Cabra, uh, you can get a seven day free trial. And on top of that, you also get 20% off any premium membership. So if you like what you've seen in this video, make sure to use the link in the description to get 20% off uh, your premium membership, which is pretty cool. So even though I have an account already, I'm actually gonna start by uh, creating an account to show you the account creation process. Before we get started with that though, I do wanna make a quick mention of Tidio's newest feature, which is Lyro. It has just come out in the last few days and it is an AI powered chatbot that allows users to answer 70% of customer questions of human-like language. It is quite similar to ChatGPT, um, but it's just limited to knowledge base of a particular website. So if you have, you know, if your customer has any questions about shipping or something, and you can program it to know about these things and it'll be able to respond in a way that a human could. And this will massively help cut down the amount of your frequently asked questions that your human support agents will have to answer, which then frees them up to, you know, focus on more complicated or intricate things. Uh, which is pretty cool. So if you're interested in that, you can go to tdio.com slash Lyro uh, to check it out. But we're gonna head back to the main content of the video now. So I'm just gonna use a different email address for it. We're gonna come here and then my password manager is almost definitely gonna get in the way. There it is. So I'm just gonna fill in email and password off screen and it's not even done a very good job at that. Awesome, cool. So I'm gonna put my business email in. Uh, and then you'll see we also need to put a website in as well. I'm just gonna put in my own. Uh, and it doesn't actually match uh, the website domain when the chatbot is running. This is so you can run it on local um, systems as well. So if you're testing things out locally, like I'm gonna be doing in this video, uh, then you don't need to worry about that so much. And you hit agree, and you get started. And then it runs you through a little bit of a setup process. So you can put in your name. I'm just gonna put in uh, Cabra for this. And then you can set your branding. So you can set any color you want. Let's choose... Well, to be fair, I think that one might be the closest uh, to my branding. You can also put a you know a custom one in if you if you need to, and you can set your chat language right there. And then you set your main focus on what you want to do. So in this case, I want to solve customer problems, and we're going to be spending most of the video in the automated section. So I'm just going to tick that. Uh, I don't have any support agents. My industry is, I guess, a blog, I suppose. And I'm just getting started, so I'm just gonna put zero in there. But if you have an existing website, you can you know, say how many you've got going on. We then get an option to set up our first chatbot. Uh, so we're just gonna set this one to greet warmly. I will show you this in more detail later down the line. We're just gonna continue. And then these are your installation instructions. I'm gonna show you how to do that from the settings panel instead. So we're just gonna continue. Though you can do it from here if you want to. And then we get, I'm just gonna turn my uh, MacBook speaker off, otherwise you're gonna hear that twice. But you get your you know, little pop-up in the corner and then you're done. So we can skip now and go to the main dashboard on this bit. And this is what your dashboard will look like. So you have your current insights, you know, chatbot monthly limits, um, and various links and stuff, different things. Now I'm actually gonna show you first how to install a chatbot onto your website before we do anything else. So we're gonna come down here to the settings icon here. And then we're gonna to head to the installation tab up here. So these are the instructions that you saw earlier in the setup. 
So you can install uh, just using JavaScript, line of code, or you can do it on Shopify, WordPress, or any of these others. You get you know various instructions on how to do each. If you are installing it on something that isn't just a custom website, then the instructions are going to differ a little bit. Once you've installed it, all the configuration, the settings, the chatbot, it's all the same. Uh, but if you are installing it on your custom website, you can follow along with, with me. So we just need to copy this link to the clipboard. And then we come over to our code. You can see I already have a file open. So if you're doing something in Flask or Django or anything like that, then you'll probably have some sort of base template that other templates extend. Uh, so this is kind of a template that every single web page across the entire website uses. And you probably want to put it in here. So I'm just going to put it up here near the top as it is a script. If you are having problems with getting it to load, then feel free to just put it like anywhere that's going to get a hit. So you can put it down here if you want and the HTML will work just fine. Uh, but I found that, you know, you could just put things up here and it will all work fine. So you have this code with your async and then you have the closing tag and that's all you need to do. So if you then run uh, the website, so in my case, it'd be flask double dash app app run because I named my app app. And if we come over to, where is it? There it is. And then we go 127.0.0.1 column 5,000. We get this amazing looking website. Um, <laughs> uh, this is just something that I did in tutorials, which is why it doesn't look incredible. But we get the uh, all the chat button stuff down here as well. So you can see, hi there, if you have any assistance or whatever. And, you know, we have our chatbot message in here and it all works perfectly fine. So now that we've got everything working installed, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the dashboard just to you know give you an idea of what all the tabs do. But as I said earlier, we're gonna be spending most of our time in the chatbot editor, but we're gonna be creating some cool little chatbots. So if you come back to the panel, let's start with some of the appearance settings. So these are roughly the same appearance settings that you had before, they're just a little bit more in detail. So now you can change the widget position from left or the right. You can also have a button label. If you want to turn it off, feel free. Uh, you also have yes, uh, widget visibility. You have mobile things. You have multi-language, which is pretty cool. So you can actually add, say you wanted to add a Chinese language, you can do that. And now if we head to our translations, you can see we have two tabs up here and you have all these uh, different um, like phrases and stuff that you have. But also if you leave them as defaults, you have the translations in there by default as well, which is kind of cool. And you can you know, edit your translations if you want as well, which is actually really nice. So you know, adding multi-language is really good, especially if you're doing stuff internationally. Uh, the rest of these settings, I'll let you explore yourself because it's kind of mainly contextual, especially stuff with the account and the team and all this. So I'll, I'll let you explore that on your own. But on the actual sidebar, we have the inbox. So if you've had any messages from anyone that's come in through the chat widget, uh, they'll appear here. So if I just say like, hi, uh, and then just do example dot, oh, it would be at example.com. And then we have that. So we can go in here and we have it unassigned and we have our message in here. So this is where they'll appear um, once they've been sent. You have your dashboard, which is where we started to begin with. Uh, you have your chatbots, which we'll come back to later. You have your visitors. Uh, so this is where you can get an idea of the visitors on your website. So you can see that I'm currently visiting my own website because I'm on it and you get, you know, uh, the page that they're on currently, you get the browser, you get the, the nationality, et cetera, et cetera. And you can start a chat with them for me if you want. You then get contacts. So this is a list of anyone that's ever sent you a message. You have their emails here and you can also you know, change whether they're subscribed to the thing or not. So say if, you know, someone subscribed and then they've messaged you saying they don't want to be subscribed anymore, you can do that here. You also have email marketing, um, which is not really important to us, but if you do want to do some email marketing, you can do it there. And you have some nice analytics. You can see, you know, how many conversations you've had, a uh, number of conversations started by the visitors. And this is like, um, I guess, a heat map. I'm not really sure what you call it, but I, I know in data, you'd probably call it a heat map. Uh, of all the different dates and times that you're busiest, which is kind of cool. So you can kind of um, you know, distribute things accordingly. And then that's pretty much it. So now we can move on to the exciting bit, which is creating chatbots. So if you come up here to the chatbots icon, you'll see we have a number of templates 
uh, to go through. So you have, you know, an AR responder, you have an FAQ bot for restaurant, spinning wheel, all this fun stuff. We are instead going to create one from scratch just to you know show it off. And you have a number of triggers that can be used to activate uh, the bot. So you can have it on a first visit to site, visit a returns to site, um, you know, form abandoned. They click the icon if the operator starts it, etc., etc. For the sake of this, we're just going to use first visit on site. And you come to this, um, you know, click and draggable area. We can put these actions and then you have conditions and you have triggers in here as well. But for our simple chatbot, we are just going to send a chat message and it creates a link for us. And then we just type hi in here. And then we can hit this test it out button uh, to come to, uh, you know, a test web page. And you can see it's now saying hi, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then if you activate it, then it will actually go live on your website. So we have a new chatbot and we can call it welcomer. We're just going to set this to other. And hit continue and if we go to our page and then refresh it you'll see it's not going to do anything because this isn't our first time to the website so it's only the first time anyone actually shows up if you want people to if we just quickly go back and edit it uh, if you want people to get that message when they return the website as well then you have visitor returns to the site and you can do something like this as well. Uh, so you can have multiple triggers in any chatbot, but it needs to funnel into the same uh, child node. If you want multiple triggers that do different things, then you need to be creating multiple chatbots. Uh, this just helps clean everything up and make everything you know a little bit easier to work with. Uh, but of course, if the flow is going to be the same, just on multiple chatbots or multiple um, triggers, then you can just have as many triggers as you want. Uh, going into that event but I want to show you something a little bit cool on that so if we just get rid of that and then I want to show you how to add some interactivity because currently our chatbot just says hi and it's not really all that useful so if we actually if we get rid of this one as well come to the actions tab over here and you can see we have a number of decision ones here so you have decision quick replies decision buttons and decision card messages I'm going to use quick replies for this example so we can just drag that here and then create a node or a link into it like that. Hit edit. And then we can type in our message. So it could be like, welcome. Uh, did you need any help with anything? And then our website currently only supports logging in and registering. So I'm just going to do uh, register and log in. If we test that out. Uh, and you can see we have our bot and then we have our options down here, which is kind of cool. If we open up the thing, you can see we have our options here. So register and log in. Uh, but if we click on one, it's not actually going to do anything. Well, it actually has a default uh, by the looks of things. Um, but we want it to have you know, a little bit more interactability. So what we can do is we can send a chat message based on the response. So if you click and drag from a node, and do it in here, we can then choose which option we want this chat message to go to. So we can have it, we can set it as register, edit it, and we can do registration help. I'm just going to do like a default, uh, you know, placeholder uh, thing for now, just to save a little bit of time. And do the same with login. If there's only one option left, it won't actually give you the option. Then we can edit that as well. And we can do login help. If we test this out, then uh, it does the same thing as it did before. If we type register, then we get our registration help. If we refresh the page and do login instead, we get our login help. So it works. However, it kind of just stops. It's not really all that useful at the moment in that sense, because what if the user wants help with something else? Well, you can actually drag from here to here and send the node back to the quick replies and now you've created a loop so if we did go and test this out it will then send us a message we want to register registration help and do you need help with anything we can then now do login and we get back to the start so it's always in a constant loop so if the user ever needs help with anything else they can get it uh, so that's the general gist 
of how to create a relatively simple chatbot. Obviously, you, you might want to do more complicated stuff like that uh, than that. And I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do. I want to show off one of these conditions. So say we have someone that's trying to register and the instructions are different uh, based on whether they're on mobile or not. Well, we can actually get rid of this node here, drag that down a bit, and we can use this mobile. And this mobile will, you know, essentially detect whether they're on mobile and you'll have yes or no. So if they are on mobile, we need another action as well. So we can send a check message, one for each. And then we want to connect this up. We actually want to do it this way. The, uh, the direction uh, does actually matter. So do keep that in mind. Uh, so if they are on mobile and then if they're not on mobile, and then we want to, I'm trying to organize these and then we can loop that back up to do the same thing. So if they are a mobile, then we could do a uh, mobile registration help. And then if they're not on mobile, uh, we can do not mobile registration help. If we test that out, we can see uh, if I do register, because I'm not on mobile, we get a not mobile registration help. If I were to do it on mobile, then I would get the mobile one. So you can use all these different conditions and actions and triggers to create some pretty complicated chatbots. You can have as many active as you want. Uh, and you know these just help, especially with your know, frequently asked questions, it might help the user get an answer quicker than they would otherwise have done. And it also frees up if you do have any human operatives on the other end, it frees up their time not having to deal with you know these really simple questions. There is one more thing that I wanna show you before I head off. So if you come back into your settings, you'll see at the bottom, it says developer down here, and you can do stuff with open API. This is only available for people on TDO Plus, but you can do you know open API stuff with it. You can also access uh, a JavaScript API from here uh, that will allow you to uh, you know, send messages or even like you know, modify the appearance of the chat widget using the JavaScript API without having to go through the configuration panel. So if you want to do it via code and not through the actual user interface, then you're well and good to do that. I'm not really going to delve into this in this video. This is more mainly chatbot side of things, uh, but that is potentially something to keep in mind if you are interested. Thanks again to TDO for sponsoring this video. Again, if you use the link in the description or the link on screen now, you get 20% off when you upgrade to a premium plan. So if you like what you see here, make sure you don't miss out on that. If you found this video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas on videos you want to see me do, make sure to leave them in the description below or the comments below, sorry. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so by either becoming a patron or a member using the links in the buttons below. Uh, one pound a month on either and you can be on the screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where we do something really cool. So I'll see you for that.